Today I'm at Tribal Burger, going to meet Paul Patterson. Actually, Paul was one of my old clients through my accountancy work, uh, but now on a different level, I'm going to meet him in his kitchens. Hi Susie, welcome to Tribal Burger. Welcome to the kitchen. That'll be great. Sounds good. Tribal Burgers ingredients are the best, it's locally sourced and they make their burgers in-house. They grind their own meat using two different types of cuts of beef and look, Paul is doing it right now in front of my eyes. And that's it, there's no other ingredients added to it no breadcrumbs, no nothing. It is 100% pure ground beef and it's just fantastic to see. It is then shaped into round meatballs and stored in the fridge till they are ready to be cooked. The meatballs are then put onto an oiled hot plate. It is then flattened with a cast iron paddle this gives it that characteristic burger patty shape. The patties are seasoned lightly and that's it. Nothing else is added and they just slowly cook and sizzle on both sides. For our special burger today, we are making a double stack cheeseburger topped with some yummy pulled pork. To the side here, Paul is heating through some beef short rib, which has been slowly cooked. This is a great tip from Paul on how to melt your cheese on top of your burger patty. Splash some water on top of the hot plate and then place a cloche or a bowl on top of the burger and it creates steam and it just makes the cheese melt straight into the meat. The stock that the meats have been cooking in are now poured back on top of them to intensify and make this meat really super tender again. Time to build our burger. And more cheese. Top with some delicious balsamic onions. And voila, it is finished. Look at that. My turn. Not as easy as it looks. Yes, I used to work in our family takeaway but I was actually more comfortable if I was going to be frying off the chips and the wings.
I decided to make the tribal burger, which consisted of the burger patty, rocket, the American style cheddar, balsamic onions, and the signature black pepper sauce. Now onto the fries. Tribal Burger uses rooster potatoes. I only discovered this type of potato at the very start of this year and they are such a fab potato for chipping. They keep crunchy on the outside and fluffy in the middle. Just that perfect combination to be the perfect fry. The short rib cheesy fries are now topped with a delicious spicy salsa and the last portion of fries here is topped with their signature peppered sauce. My favourite I love chicken wings. I am absolutely addicted to these and they are coated in their sacred house buffalo sauce and it is just delicious. You just have to go and try them. Okay, so Paul, thanks very much for inviting me to Tribal Burger. Uh, we are in Calendar Street, but is this your only branch? No, our original branch is up in Botanic Avenue in the Queen's Quarter. So it opened three years ago tomorrow. Um, Calendar Street will be open two years now in December. So it was a year between the two of them. Very exciting. So you weren't always in the burger business? No. I started off as a chef, basically. I moved to London when I was 20, 21, okay. uh, from Donegal, and then worked with Sir James Conran in Quaglino's, Menso, Bluebird, and um, part of all that setup. Then I came so back. So you had high end? Yes. Super high end? High end, but high volume. You know, okay. Quaglino's did a thousand covers a day. Oh my goodness. So we had, say, 50 odd chefs in the kitchen. So it was, yeah, high volume. Yeah, but good training. Yeah, uh, unbelievable. Fantastic. I mean, we started in 1993 in the height of a recession. Oh my goodness. And Conran spent millions revamping the, the site. And it was it was a huge success from day one. But it was brilliant, really good. Great. And then you moved back? Moved back to Dublin to take up my um, job in the Stampa in Dublin as head chef and stayed there for over a year. And then I got the opportunity to move back to Belfast wow. to Shoe on the Lisburn Road. Yes. So I stayed in Shoe for five years and then started to think about opening up our own business. Um, I just got tired of working 18 hour days. Um, Be your own boss. Exactly, yeah. So any mistakes we made, I could always stand back and say, well, it's your own fault. You know? So there's nobody else to blame. Okay. Um, so then we started up with food trucks. So we imported an old American Airstream from America. Fab. Thinking that we would make our fortune doing burgers at festivals, but then we quickly realized there's only two festivals in Ireland. So, yeah. Um, and we had to then diversify into lunchtime markets. And what was your business called for the food trucks then? The food trucks, it was started off as mango catering and then we, we transformed into Burger Republic. Yeah, which is so, the name I know. The name you know. So Burger Republic started off basically, and that's where the confusion, as they say, we're a Dublin branch, but we're not. We're actually, we're, we live locally. So yes. we're a local owned restaurant. Um, and we started off doing lunchtime markets in Dublin. So we travel up and down to Dublin every week. Then we got into the festivals and then we started doing corporate work. So we do corporate work for Amazon, Facebook, Google, Workday, Fab. Jameson Whiskey. 
Um, and then we decided, right, now is the time to do the bricks and mortar, so we opened up in the town. And from then it's just, we still had the food trucks. When we opened up Botanic, we had to change the name to Tribal Burger. Yes, or, just uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was re- the, the public, uh, Burger Republic didn't fly, did it? Didn't fly. We, were, we quickly realised that we would alienate half the population. Wonder why. And it's, um, we, we did all the research and we found out that we couldn't find a single company in Northern Ireland with the word Republic in the name. Oh, that's really interesting. That's it. Yeah, so at that time, and that was five years ago, four years ago, so then we... We did a bit of a brainstorming session around our kitchen table with a couple of bottles of wine and a couple of friends and we came up with Tribal Burger. So, and that's been stuck ever since. It's a household name. Um, so now we've rebranded the trucks or now Tribal Burger as well. Yeah. So it's trying to create a brand, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, but it's the Botanic one that I know. I yeah. knew all first, so mm-hmm. yeah. So. Botanics are baby, it's tiny. So it's only, at the minute, it's only 29 seats. Usually it's around about 40. Um, so yeah, it's it's a just a nice steady wee restaurant that keeps turning over. The staff are nice and friendly, and some, most of our staff have been there since it opened. So we have Glenn the that manages it, Milan's the chef, and then we have Jamie who started who's the head chef here. We started up in Botanic. So when we opened up Calendar, we basically transformed or we, we transferred the that key staff from Botanic who yeah. knew the systems. To down here. here. Yeah. That's brilliant. So, no, no. That's great. And such a good space and area here for city centre. You're in the city centre. Yeah, you're in city centre. Yeah. And it's it's probably not the most salubrious street in Belfast City Centre, but it's it's high footfall. Um, and it's the trouble is you just people have to find you. Uh, and it takes time no matter whether we've had a restaurant in Botanic. We still have people walking in here saying didn't even know this existed or we didn't even know you were in Botanic. So yeah, it's a constant battle. We're just trying to keep going with social media to try and get exposure. Paul, thanks very much for letting me into your kitchen and being let loose on the burgers and frying off the patties. Uh, so, is it just you that's involved in the business or who nope. else? Myself and my wife Elaine are involved in the business. Elaine is probably, there's a, there's a popular conception among restaurants that the chefs are not financially minded or just stick them in the kitchen and forget about them. Um, so yeah, Elaine's the, the financial brains behind the whole thing. She keeps everything going in the background, office work, paperwork, yeah. um, which is not my forte. Um, she just points me in the right direction and lets me off the leash, basically. Yeah. So I handle all the day-to-day running of on-site. Yes. And then whenever I go home with a mad idea, Lane sort of says yes rain, or no. Raises me back in and tells me what I can and can't do. So yeah. Love it. So that's it. Basically, she's she's heavily involved in the whole financial side of it. Um, she's a business degree. She's come from an office background, so she she doesn't actually want to be in the day-to-day side of it. Um, she lets me. But it's a perfect work. combination, though. Yeah, it's very, very really, good. Really, really good partnership yeah. and combination. And yeah. she's your wife. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and I have to keep her happy, and she has to keep me happy. So it, it manages well. I mean, my strength is cooking. Her strength is financial. Wow. So, yeah.